Hey guys, happy Tuesday. I uh, hope you're having a wonderful week so far, feeling good after yesterday's hard hitter um, and ready to get after another fun one today. For our workout today, our first thing we start with is the question of the day. So today's Topic Tuesday, Nutrition Topic Tuesday. Um, we're gonna talk about stretching. So again, those other things that help us edge up our health. Um, not always related to literally what you're putting into your body for food, but some things we do for recovery as well, um, like sleep, stretching, meditation, all of those fun things. So our question today is, what is your favorite stretch? Um, that's such a great question. I honestly don't know what my favorite stretch is. Anything for like the low back. I kind of like just like seated forward fold or like a um, pancake stretch child's pose. Cat cow, if you want to count that as like a stretch, I think it, I think it can count as that's active stretch, but lots of stretches, lots of options. Um, we've been giving you guys some mobility at the end of each workout, so I'll show you some stuff at the end of today. Um, one of the big things that we want to talk about with uh, stretching is it's going to help us with our recovery a little bit, but mainly that it's going to help us with getting into those movements that we want to get into um, without causing injury. So, you know, sometimes we have stubborn ankles, hips, shoulders that really limit us in our lifting. So getting that good mobility in, we can increase our range of motion through those movements. You know, if your foot, if your heel always comes up in a squat um, or in that pistol, Maybe you struggle with doing an overhead squat. Um, sometimes that can be a combination of hip, ankle, and overhead mobility. So we wanna get into some gentle stretching to help with recovery, as well as allow us to get through those movements we like to do. Um, and not only in the gym, but prevent us from injury in everyday life. Um, the more mobile we are, the easier it is to bend the body in, you know, just bending over and putting away dishes, you're not gonna pull a muscle. Um, doing that, hopefully. So additionally, we can think about stretching um, and helping us with some meditation or mindfulness if you wanna connect your body to your breath um, and get through some active stretching with that mind-body connection. Um, great things to think about in yoga um, or just in your own, like I sometimes do a five minute flow in the morning where I just breathe and move through some things that are kind of tight. Um, lots of ways you can do that to release tension throughout your whole body. Really good option to do right before bed as well. Remember that we have at the end of each workout um, for this week, especially we're really focusing on making sure we include five minutes of recovery. So even if you're not doing the class, you can just watch the five minutes um, of stretching and do that. Additionally, we have every Thursday, a 15 minute class with Matt, a physical therapist, and now we have Sunday yogas at 7 p.m. with Beth. Um, it's 45 minutes and it's yin, so it's really getting into those deep stretches. Really amazing restorative yoga, so try that out as well. All of those links are in your interactive calendar. Check it out. For today, we aren't going to get mobilizing right away. We'll end our workout with that, but we'll get warmed up, get those hips ready, quick five-minute warm-up. Um, we're gonna hit a quick pre-wad, getting the upper body a good pump. And then our workout today is, are you down to burpee? Not actually, it's DT burpee. Um, so we're gonna be doing DT with some lateral burpees over an object to break up that DT. There is a little rest built into that workout because it's a 20 minute AMRAP, but we want you guys to catch your breath before you get after another round. Um, we'll go through all that here check out the information in the details, but getting warmed up. You'll be repeating the bottom half burpees a couple times and the final round will do full burpees. So that first movement, 30 seconds, we're gonna be doing bottom half burpees or better known as plank, hopping to the bottom of your squat, getting those hips warmed up. You can also Step back and step it up if you have the hip mobility for that. After that, we'll go grab those toes, pull those hips down, lift them up. We got Russian baby makers for 30 seconds. Then we'll bottom of the squat, twist up to the ceiling, 
like I said, really getting those hips loosened up, getting that low back warm, hamstrings warm. After 30 seconds of warrior squats, we'll go right back to that bottom half burpee. After this, we'll come into our table position, get that upper back loosened, go reach through, twist up. Threading the needle here. Do that on both sides. After 30 seconds right and 30 seconds left, we go right back into our favorite movement here, that bottom half burpee. 30 seconds there. Then we'll go into our jumping or hopping Spider-Mans. So it's that wide mountain climber. Doesn't have to be fast. The focus is to get that full Spider-Man, get that hip open, but to move through it a little faster so you get more reps or more movement through those hips. Now we'll lay onto our bellies, arms at a T. Opposite foot to opposite hand. Scorpions there to warm up. You can hear my back cracking. And then we'll finish with 30 seconds of full burpees. So laying all the way down and hopping over there. And that is your warm up. Whew, you should be good and warm considering that we did like 10 seconds of each of those and I'm warm. Um, Good and warm for your pre-wad today. So our pre-wad, you're gonna be working on one minute. Um, there's no rest, it's three rounds straight through. So rest as you need during those rounds. Quality is the focus um, always with our pre-wads. So we've got our bicep curls first, depending on what you have for equipment. Um, you can use any odd object that you have. Um, I know I think remember used some like Clarbrune water and like the big case of it. Um, so you can really use like the wine bottle or vodka bottle. Um, if you have like any household item, that works too. Um, and then if you have a weight, who will use that? So depending on what you have for weight, you might only have one dumbbell or kettlebell and that's okay. Um, if it's a weight that you can do single arm curls with, Use that um, and you can go switching as you see fit. So maybe do 30 seconds on one side and 30 seconds on the other. Or maybe you do however you want, like set of five on each side and then switch. If that weight's too challenging for a single arm movement, you can grab both dumbbell heads and then do your curls there. The big thing we're focusing on, regardless of how or what weight you're doing, one thing about those elbows being connected to the bottom of your rib cage, 90 degree angles there, curl it up and lower it. So it's not gonna stay at 90 degree angle, but that's kind of the easiest way to see am I holding this nice and close to my body or are my elbows connected to my rib cage? And as I lower and lift, they don't move. So I'm not using my arms to push me through. I'm keeping them nice and tight and really isolating that bicep muscle here. So again, if you have an object that you use both arms on, it looks like that. And then you can do this with a kettlebell. Um, your hands will be naturally closer together. So you might not get that full same range. See my hands are together here versus like out, like I'm holding a box, they're more together. At an angle, but that's okay. You're still definitely isolating that bicep, but it can be a little bit more challenging. So that 35 pound, I will not be doing single arm weights. I would be holding and doing this. Again, in that one minute, if you need to break it up at all, break it up. Um, that's where you get your rest in. I want quality reps, so don't do a minute. And that, excuse me, towards that end of that minute, be like using your hips to thrust you through, like really try to isolate those biceps, shake it out, get right back to it for that minute. The next movement we have is a one and one fourth push up. So, first things first, working on a quality push up. Want to be in that beautiful plank position. 
hands underneath the shoulders, fingers, hands nice and wide, fingers spread apart, directly under those shoulders. Then you're going to keep in that plank position, keep that core engaged, lower the chest all the way to the deck, touching the ground. And then you'll lift to about one fourth of the way, lower, and then press all the way up. So instead of pressing all the way through that rep, you're going to lower back down each time before you go all the way through. So it's down, up a quarter of the way, back down, and up. That's one rep. You can do this on your knees. Again, engage that core. So a lot of times I see this in a knee push up, right? We want to engage that core. Think about tightening that pelvis, pull that belly button towards the knees. And then that same exact thing, you'll lower, lift a quarter of the way, lower, press all the way up. That's one. Lift, lower, press up. So that is the knee option. You can also do these as a two part push up, lower, push the knees down, lift, lower, lift, all the way. Really the purpose of the two part push up is just to have you practice that controlled descent portion while maintaining a beautiful hollow body. And you can put the knees in the ground and go into that knee push up if you choose. So those are your options for that one and one fourth push up. Um, the last thing we'll finish with is a one minute of height shoulder taps. So that piked position, you're just going to be like you are in your down down, and then you're tapping your shoulders, just as it sounds. If that's too challenging, we'll go into our plank position, and the opposite hand. But in the piked position, you're coming same hand to same arm. So after that, you walk right back into those bicep curls. We're going to do this for three total rounds. Um, you are more than welcome to use like 10 to 20 or 10 to 15 seconds to transition back to the next round. Um, there's just no one minute of rest between or anything like that. So once your upper body is good and you got a good pump going, we're going to get after DT or B. So DT, we're going to do 12, 9, 6, like we normally do, 12 deadlifts, um, 9, cleans from a hang position, six shoulder to overhead. But between each of those, you have that same rep scheme of lateral burpees over whatever you're using. So if you're using a barbell, cool, dumbbell, perfect, kettlebell, great. Whatever you're doing, um, we're gonna do it that way. Um, if you're doing this with a dumbbell or a kettlebell, you're gonna do um, six deadlifts on the right, six deadlifts on the left, then your 12 lateral burpees. You're gonna do alternating cleans for those nine, do your lateral burpees, three shoulder to overhead on the right, three shoulder to overhead on the left, your six burpees. So then you're resting one minute before you get right back into that 12 reps, um, into a 20 minute AMRAP, seeing how many rounds of DT burpee you can get through. So. I'm gonna demo this with the um, dumbbell and kettlebell and the assumption that you have one heavier object that you're using on single arm. If you're using two of anything, then you're just following the rep scheme exactly how it says. So double means that you're using a barbell per se. So you're doing, if you have something in both hands, even if it's one object across both hands, you're doing 12 of your deadlifts, nine of your cleans, and six of your shoulder to overhead. So getting warmed up, just starting with that deadlift is the first thing we've got to do. Chest nice and high. If you have a single object, you can choose to have that between the legs and stand. You can also have that to the side. Ideally, it would be to your side. And the reason I say that is that your feet can be more in that deadlift position directly underneath those hips. Chest is nice and high. You stand. Go ahead and get in six of those on each side, feeling it out. If you choose to have that weight between the legs, 
it's okay. Just make sure that your feet stay directly under your, um, your hips, not in like a wide sumo stance. All right. So we've got 12 of those. We'll talk about the burpees in a little bit, but next we have that hang clean. So even if you were doing deadlifts with a kettlebell, right, you could have also been doing those same things. I'll just show quick with the kettlebell. It's the same exact idea, right? Or again, you could be doing it between the legs. It's just six on the right, six on the left. The next move we have is the hang clean. The hang clean, we're setting those hips back, driving straight up, zipping the coat, and meeting that dumbbell or kettlebell. So we got it from the hang position, so you have to deadlift it up, send it back, up under, stand it up. You can also do this with your kettlebell, no problem, meeting that weight. So again, we deadlift it up, send those hips back, meet that weight, stand it up. These are gonna be alternating, so you're gonna go opposite arm, sorry, every single time you're switching arms, do those nine reps, whether you're using a kettlebell or a dumbbell. If you really struggle with that kettlebell being all over the place, then just do I height single arm kettlebell swing alternating. So it's gonna look like this. One, two, three, so on and so forth for your nine reps. The last thing we have is gonna be that shoulder to overhead. So for that, you can choose to strip press, push press, or um, jerk that weight. So getting warmed up, just getting that three on the right. And three on the left, strip press here. Then to add that push press, you can use those dip, drive, so leave those hips, squeeze everything up. Getting in a couple reps on each side there. And then if you need to, you can also jerk under that weight. So that's dip, drive, punch yourself under. And then finish with stand, right? So you can do three on the right, three on the left, if you have that single object, punch under, stand it up. And then let's say that the weight you have is way too heavy for you to do single arm with. Then we're gonna do those deadlifts with both hands on. Those cleans you can do with both hands on, two inch dip, punch under. Use those hips, it's not a reverse bicep curl as much as it looks like one. Use those hips. Then for that jerk, you can be in that front rack position, two inch dip, punch it up overhead. Awesome. The only other thing we have is burpees between each of those, and they're gonna be burpees laterally going over that dumbbell. These can be lay down, step up, lay down, hop up, however you wanna break down your burpee, kettlebell or dumbbell, you can use. Lay down next to your burpee, lay down next to your dumbbell, I mean, burpee down, hop up, Two foot takeoff going over. That's the RX version. You can also step back, step up, step over, right back into that next one. <laughs> Don't reverse step, the cat just got me in the face. Um, if you have a kettlebell, just make sure you lay on its side so that when you hop over, you're not like jumping over something super, super tall. So still lay down, heat up. Two foot take over. So how this workout goes, you do your 12 deadlifts, 12 of those, your nine hang cleans, nine of those, your six shoulder to overhead, six of those, and then you rest for one whole minute before you get right back to that next round. Have fun, message us if you have any questions at all. Thank you.